Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and today I'm going to be giving you a tour of these bookshelves. The reason for the timing is that I am in the process of making some new bookshelves and doing a tour of both these bookshelves and the new ones at the same time would be a very long video. So I want to do one for these and then later I'll do one for those. And I will show you where I'm keeping all my books now that will go on those shelves that will explain why I need new shelves. So I have some books piled here. These are sitting actually on some flower petals that I'm pressing. Then I have a little pile here, and a little pile here, and a little pile here, and some mishmashed in here with among some art supplies. Because I have this weird thing where if I can't see my art supplies, I forget that I have those individual art supplies. So I kind of keep them all on the floor next to my desk where I can see them. I'm working on figuring out a better system for that, but this is what it is at the moment. Then I have a pile right here of uh, to be hauled books, and over here I have my pile of library books. So on the new shelves there's going to be a shelf dedicated to whatever physical books I have um, out from the library at any one time. Anyway, the books that I have arranged nicely because they fit in with the color scheme or they're my favorites are these ones. So first we have my white book shelf which includes one yellow book because it is the sequel to this white book. First of all there is The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one which I've talked about as a poetry book a lot. A lot so a, which is a really good middle uh, YA ace rep, indigenous rep, thriller mystery thing um and we have the suicidal muffin and i have him because he makes me feel better about being depressed um he is being propped up by my little cinderella carriage box that is adorable um but doesn't fit my display at the moment then we have jan karan somewhere safe with somebody good which is a really pretty edition of uh, one of the books in that series, it's Christian uh, historical fiction, close to contemporary, but it's like in the 50s or something. This is The Cat Who Came for Christmas by Cleveland Amory. It's really cute. It's um, contemporary mix of nonfiction and fictionalized stories about animals and animal rights activism. Uh, Frostburn by Patricia Briggs, part of the Mercy Thompson series, I really enjoy, have talked about a lot. Wild Like Me by Louise Pentland is a nice contemporary women's fiction, basically. Get a Life Chloe Brown is a romance that I really enjoy. It has chronic illness, fibromyalgia rep, um, fat rep, um, and that's really nice. I think it was really well done, and I just watched a review by Kira the Scrivener. And she has fibromyalgia, and she thought the rep was really good. Had some differences from her own experience, but still good. Uh, Nora Roberts' A Little Magic is a collection of three short stories about um, that are fantasy romance set in Ireland. Uh, Taking Tuscany and Saving Sailor by Renee Riva are more Christian contemporary, almost it's like set in the 60s <laughs> historical fiction. Um, these ones are uh, middle grade. Then we have my black shelf, which includes a very cute um, red panda stuffy, complete with a big fat tail, um, and a little bitty black potion bottle. So we have The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo, yes, um, and that those are some really cool dark fairy tales that all have twisted parts where they're twisted around from what the original fairy tale is and have different endings and teaching points and I really love the writing in that one. Then we have the princess saves herself in this one which is by the same person as the witch doesn't burn um, and is another really good feminist poetry collection. Magnolia Sword which I haven't read yet but I'm very excited to. It's a Mulan retelling by Sherry Thomas. Radiance by Grace Draven is a romance, fantasy romance, that I rave about quite a bit. Sorcery of Thorns is a YA fantasy that isn't like super creative or new, but 
has a lot of really enjoyable elements and the the triad of main characters reminds me of those from Howl's Moving Castle but in a YA format instead of MG format and I really enjoyed that plus there's a little bit of ace rep and bi rep then we have Deathless Divide which has quite a bit of ace arrow ace rep with this character over here and have really cool female female relationships both romantic and otherwise and cool zombie hunting then we have Women in Power, a manifesto, which I haven't, I've only dipped into yet, but I'm excited to get to. Then we have, eh, Heart's Blood by Juliette Marillier, which is a fantasy romance, um, Beauty and the Beast retelling that I talk about a lot. And An Unkindness of Ghosts, which has autism rep and is a sci-fi. Then we have this yellow and brown sort of shelf. Um, and it is decorated with a little potion bottle, some hair sticks, a phoenix slash firebird blown glass thingy, and I collect um, teacups and little plates and stuff that has um, East Asian art on it because I really like the way it looks, and it kind of gives me a creative zhuzh whenever I look at it. So the books in here are a bunch of young children's books, like In Case You Ever Wonder by Max Lucado. This is a whole bunch by Max Lucado, actually. Um, and it's pretty much Christian fiction and Christian nonfiction. So all you ever need, you are special because I love you. The Song of the King, which was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Um, and The Children of the King. And we were big Max Lucado people when I was a kid. And then Princess and the Kiss, which warning has purity culture stuff going on with it. Then we have a whole bunch of Snow White with the red hair that I got for Christmas. Um, and red all in a row. They're really good. It's um, not really fantasy. I don't think there's any magic, but it's historical fiction set in a really cool um, world with... I would say a little past Renaissance era. And then we have Tempest by Beverly Jenkins, one of my favorite books by her. It's really um, funny and has the single parent romance trope. And then The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, which I talk about a lot because I really like it. It has autism wrap. Then we have my red, blue, purple, red, blue, purple uh, bookshelf. It is decorated with a blown glass piano and a glass bell. These were both inherited from my grandma. She had a big collection of blown glass and uh, bells of various kinds. And so this is the Inkheart Trilogy, which was very popular, I think, like 10 years ago. Um, it's fantasy where, um, kind of like portal fantasy, where instead of you going to do a magical world, when this certain guy reads books, the characters come out of the books. Very interesting. Uh, and then two, the first two books of the Dragon Chronicles, which are middle grade with cool dragons, and I enjoy those a lot. And then The Mermaid's Voice Returns uh, by Amanda Lovelace, and that's another from that same author. Then we have one of my favorite bookshelves, both aesthetically and because of the books on it. I really like jewel tones, and so all of these jewel tones over here and with Uprooted are really nice, and the nice pretty green of this one. And so I put a bunch of pretty potion bottles on top. I'll have to take those off. But this is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. A uh, Court of Wings and Ruin by her. A Court of Frost and Starlight by her. Those are N.A. but marketed as Y.A. fantasy romance. Uh, Uprooted is by Naomi Novik. And um, I absolutely adore this book. It's got a lot of plant magic. And um, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which I love. And I really like the way the main characters bond over learning stuff together. <sighs> then we have Spinning Silver, sent by the same author. And I really like the romantic relationships in this one, too, as well as the female-female relationships. There are a lot of really strong women's loving each other and taking care of each other in this one. And it's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. 
Then we have the Fairyland series by Catherine Valente. The girl who circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making. Um, the girl who fell beneath Fairyland. The girl who soared over Fairyland. The boy who lost Fairyland. And the girl who raced Fairyland all the way home. And um, these are middle grade portal fantasy with really enjoyable protagonists and also really enjoyable world building. Kind of wacky magic where there's different magic systems throughout the different areas of this magical world. And I really like her relationships with the other characters like the Wyverary. Now this is my foresty themed shelf with mostly green but a few brown books. We have A Turn of Light by Julie E. Cerneda and I absolutely love this book and also its sequel. It's kind of historical fantasy set in another world and it's all set in one village because the main character can't leave the village because of magic that ties her there and I really like the romantic elements and the platonic relationships. Um, Show Us who, who You Are by L. McNichol. That's a autism rep book that is near future sci-fi with holograms. Then we have The Mammoth Book of Fantasy edited by Mike Ashley and it has stuff by all sorts of people including Ursula K. Le Guin and I have read maybe half of those stories and they're really interesting. That's for my kind of uh, slow study of fantasy, how it has evolved over the years. The Inklings by Humphrey Carpenter. This is about um, C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, Charles Williams, and their friends, how they sort of met and how they worked together on their fiction and poetry and things like that. Howl's Moving Castle, which I just talked about, is a middle grade with wacky magic and really fun main character interactions. The Castle in the Attic, I read when I was a kid. It's a middle grade. It's about this kid who gets shrunk down and plays with the characters, the dolls, in his castle and in his attic. The Story of Dr. Doolittle, I haven't read yet. That's one of the old books that I sometimes get from um, antique shops. This book is about flower arrangement of Japan, and it's in this, like holder thing and has really cool illustrations and I really am into plants and um, Japanese art so I really like both of those things and I'm excited to get into that. Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. More plant magic contemporary fantasy. Then we have Queen of the Dark Chamber which is another of those antique books and um, and looks really interesting. Then we have uh, Japan, The Story of a Nation, so that's a nonfiction history book about Japan. The Caller, which I haven't read yet and I'm not sure if I want to because um, I think there's a lot of car <laughs> character death in uh, this series. And then Devil... Devlin's Door, Force of the Fae by Kay Kibbe, which is an author I met on Twitter, and I haven't read that one yet. Then we have another of my jewel-toned favorite um, bookshelves, um, and partially for nostalgia because it had all of my Del Toro Quest books on it, including my extras. Example of the covers is this one with really cool illustrations. Uh, usually of the monsters that they're fighting in that particular book. There's also the Warriors books, which are all about cats and clans that they have and how they have wars be between clans. Um, Nine Fox Gambit, I just read a couple months ago and really enjoyed. It's uh, sci-fi with, um, it's like epic sci-fi with like wars and stuff. Then, Furthermore by Tahira Mafi. I really enjoyed this. It's middle grade, kind of wacky fantasy, a little bit um, along the lines of the Fairyland series. But this girl was born in a magical world, so she's not. It's not portal. It's not portal fantasy, but the world that she lives in is a lot like Fairyland. Bitter Blue is on the bottom by Christian Kishore. I really enjoyed Bitter Blue. It was really difficult to read because there's. Um, a lot of difficult topics in it, but I really like the way they were handled, and I really like the main character. It's uh, fantasy. Um, if you've ever heard of Graceling and Fire, uh, this is part of that companion trilogy thing. 
Then we have the one that I sit directly in front of in my videos. So a lot of these are stacked on top of each other, so they're hard to pull out. But we have his princess, a love letters from, what's the tagline? Love letters from your king. That's a Christian devotional. I just like the color scheme it goes with these. Then we have Jennifer Ashley's The Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie. And that has um, autism rep in it. It is a historical romance. Solace by Gail Carriger is... <sighs> Steam steampunk paranormal mystery romance. Um, an unlikely proposal is a romance that I haven't read yet, but it has the single parent romance trope. Um, Rebel by Beverly Jenkins I also haven't read yet. P Night Drope. Blah, 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 blah. Night Broken by Patricia Briggs. That's from that Mercy Thompson series. Paranormal contemporary mystery. Um, the Lord of the Rings, all three books, plus The Hobbit. Then we have uh, The Alchemist, Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flame, uh, and I haven't read... I haven't read those books. I've started them. They are middle grade, so I'm really interested in them, but they're not on my immediate TBR, as you can see from the fact they're on the bottom of an inaccessible pile of books. And then we have His Majesty's Dragon, Throne of Jade, and Black Powder War by, by, Na by Naomi Novik. I really enjoy the Temeraire series. It's got a really great um, platonic relationship between a guy and his dragon, plus a bunch of cool military relationships. And I really like Lawrence's, the main character's, professionalism, and also how he's very gray ace vibes. Sex is just not one of his priorities, even though he has a romance in the books. Then we have The Secret History of Mermaids, Creatures of the Deep, which is along these lines of these other books I'll show you. It's like pretend nonfiction, um, all about mermaids. And then Space Opera by Catherine Valente. So that Fairyland series author did a sci-fi um, about aliens coming to Earth and forcing people to compete in a musical competition to show that they have worth as a species. Then we have my pink and pastel shelf. So it is decorated with these two little boys, Dan and Phil plushies, and also this pin, whoop, which I got from Bibby Pins but that'll have to come out anyway. Um, so it's got Miss Fanny's Hat, which is another book from my childhood. It's got three Jane Austen books, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, and Persuasion, which are my three favorites. Uh, it's got Oh Hurley Born by Nora Roberts, which is a collection of three more romances, and I think they're Irish, but they might be Scottish. Love and a Headscarf, which is an autobiography uh, by a Muslim woman. Uh, Nor Roberts, The McGregor Grooms, which is another of those romance trilogies. Um, Small Wonders by Marilyn Papano, which I got because it's pink, but it's another romance. Um, A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol, that same autistic author. That one is a contemporary, another middle grade. Um, and... But you don't look autistic at all. I think autistic people like the color pink. Uh, Bian by Bianca Topes. Haven't read that one yet. Looking forward to it very soon. And Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Which is very pretty and I think will be very fun to read. Then we have Dragonology, Monsterology, and Wizardology. Which, um... I read Dragonology when I was a kid and collected these other two when I grew up because it's just fantasy lore and I love that. Then we have Fairyopolis, a fa flower fairies journal, uh, which is like these but for fairies. Then we have Zelda, uh, Hyrule Historia, which is basically all the different timelines laid out so you can understand how the games go in order and just a lot of pictures and lore and art from the game so that's awesome and then the enchanted doll's house wedding which is just a really pretty book with um little pop-up doll houses that are adorable so i love that those are my current bookshelves. Looking very much forward to getting some more and showing you those. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!
I'm not filming you.